Hello, off the back of auto review results, which I thought system one, brilliant, well done guys, love it. And the video that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago now, I was very, very excited to receive an email from Arden's and with results of their webinar that they are releasing a whole load of auto review rules themselves. And the benefit is that if you are already signed up to Arden's that you've got them on your system already. And what I'll do is I will show you how to activate them and also show you all the useful information from Arden's themselves. So let's Go over to System 1, we'll show how to activate it, then I'm going to pop over to all the rules uh, from Arden's and we'll have a chat through in terms of other bits and pieces from there. So, watch my first video first, now come back, happy days. You'll probably recognise this, um, this is your rule set screen, and have a look at this, so it says this unit. Now scroll down is that you've got Arden's there, and they've got a whole load of rules which you can see that they've already pre-populated with all the sort of the useful bits and pieces from there and it's just ah well done Arden's absolutely well done this has saved a huge amount of work uh, from this and they've gone through everything there before I get too excited which is very easy for me um, there are some bits and pieces and it's not all sort of glossy so we'll sort of talk through that from that way for a start, once you have to subscribe, as in when I say subscribe, hitting this button, and you can only choose one unit only. So if you've made massive inroads in with this, like I haven't, unfortunately, um, you're stuck. So you either go with your, what you're doing yourself or you go with Arden's. The benefit of going with Arden's is that they've clearly done a lot of thought process behind it. What they've done as well, and there is still a bit of effort here, as you can see over with these results, that these might not match up with your local laboratory. And they go to great length in the webinar to sort of talk about that you will need to tweak these with your own full blood count, for example, ranges, um, and also making sure that it's sort of both male and female ones here. And you can see here, you've got a male rule set and a female rule set there as well. The benefit as well is that they've done a whole load of searches and we talked about searches providing a safety aspect so that you're excluding certain patients from this as well, which is brilliant. Um, mainly sort of picking up the under 18s, uh, people who are pregnant, male, female, um, and thinking about transgender patients as well, sort of physiologically where they sit, um, and making sure that you don't miss anything from that point. They have got a supportive uh, template as well, and what that does is that allows you to add a couple of read codes, admittedly you can make your own, saying that effectively that the patients are suitable for auto-review, and then patients aren't suitable for auto-review. And what that will do is, depending which one's the most present, you can flick between the two, depending on which is safety from that point of view. So I'll flick over to some of the online support um, that they've given us. And you see here that they've given, and I'll leave the links for these below, so by all means have a read in your own time. Um, looking at the sort of the introduction, they've talked through the process, which, you know, if you watch my previous video, you can probably suss out what that is. Um, and it's talking about the, how the report's built up in terms of what blood tests can be useful and what they can't be. They do sort of talk about safety and again, really stress over these units of measure, so different laboratories. Um, and what they're looking over is sort of your DMAR trends as well, which is just, ah, well done Arden's absolutely well done and you can see they've gone to great detail and they're sort of looking at sort of different bits and pieces uh, from that way so this this is the read code that I was talking about so results for this patient are not to be auto reviewed and you can flick in between those two the enable is the same process that we outlined in the previous video um, and also they sort of go into it from that way what they are offering and what they I can see that they really want to push is working locally um, because they were sort of talking about that given the sweet spot of knowing that the laboratories change, alter, and have got ever so slight different variations, where should we pitch this and where should the rules be held in terms of making sure that you're not having individual GPs or individual practices dealing with this? And they think that PCN level is probably about right. Um, I can see that. I agree. Um, and it's certainly within my PCM, we're dealing with two main laboratories that would, you know, we would sort of be focusing for from that way. 
We've already shown you how to activate it already. It's really nice and simple and you must subscribe to it. You can only really have one subscription. Um, and again here, it sort of pops up and it will say it will delete all current subscriptions as well. So it's just like, ah, fine, I get it. So one to have a chat through with. I'll leave a link to the webinar. Well worth a, a watch as well uh, in your own time because they sort of go through these and some other questions that other clinicians raise as well. Which leads me on nicely to you fellow supporters of the channel. It has been great. Um, you know, I deliberately post on a couple of Facebook uh, you know, groups also on Twitter which is led, and also LinkedIn, which led to some, some really good conversations about certain bits and pieces. One that I really want to highlight, which uh, someone apologised, said, like, am I being wrong or thinking about clinical governance? Absolutely not. That is key that wherever your clinical governance need needs to really have a sort of a structure that you as your partners are happy to take with this. I had a really good chat with one of the doctors at Elm Tree Surgery. who have made great inroads into this um, and really lent on this. And he was saying that he had made, um, you know, make sure that for every rule that it was signed off effectively by three other clinicians for that risk of missing things, etc. from that way. But already he'd seen that out of like a massive list of about 300 blood results, he could clear about a sixth of them automatically with the rules. And even with the ones he hadn't cleared, a lot of the batteries were being held and it had done some of them already. So people making great, great, great inroads to this. So thank you so much for it. Ardent, I think, fits in into probably someone who's not as confident and wants in is trying this, but it it is quite complex. I'm not too sure where I sit at the moment. Even I'm sort of swaying that thinking with the amount of effort and time that it's going to take to create these rules, do I just bite the bullet and say, just stick with Arden's and sort of um, see it from that way? Um, and maybe I've got a role with our local federation as the digital clinical lead and actually thinking about federation level, something like this would probably be suitable as there won't be too much variation between our two labs anyway. So if you found that useful, please, please, please share. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help and sort of just keep going i would love to hear your feedback from this has it saved you time is it more hassle than it's worth are you just really anxious about it now and again dr dave Heimarsh, gp templates thank you so much ardens thank you so much tpp amazing have a great weekend